Welcome to this tutorial video. Today we'll be looking at recurrence relations. All recurrence relations have, I suppose, two components that are common. The first being a starting value. Remembering that a recurrence relation really is a sequence of numbers. So in this example we've got the starting value of 2. We also have to have a rule. So it looks a bit wordy, but this is saying that to work out the next term in a sequence, n plus 1, we take a starting term, n, and we add 2 to it. When you combine the starting value and a rule together, we have what we call a recurrence relation. So here's our rule and our n1, our starting value. So the first five terms of this sequence would be, well it says we start with 2, then from that 2 we add 2 to find our next term, which would be 4. We then take the 4, we add 2 for our third term to find 6. We enter 6 and we add 2 to find 8 and so forth. So this rule allows us to predict any next um, value based upon the previous value. That's how it works. Now if we want to look at this in a calculator mode, we can jump across to our TO Inspire and we can just simply type in an, a 2, press enter, and then hit multiply by 2. Now, using this technique, when I press return, I will get an answer of 4. If I press return again, I get the next term of 8, and enter, and enter, and so forth. So, using your TI Inspire, you can quite simply repeat the same process over and over again to calculate the terms in a particular sequence. So, here we have the first five terms from our previous sequence. I want to consider somewhere in the future, it might be term 10, term 20, term 156, we have some nth value, okay, an nth term associated with an, a, a value for that particular term. The next term after that we refer to as the n plus 1th term. Okay, so if this was the 50th term, this would be the 50, 51st, 51st term. And also we have a value for that uh, particular term as well. So when you step up one, or move to the next term, it's the n plus one. Likewise, if you go backwards one from the nth term, you have the n minus one term. And the value of that is the v of n minus one. Little subscripts down the bottom for n minus one, n, and for n plus one. Okay, so this relationship, this rule, can be rewritten using the following technique. Okay, if we look at the top one, we're saying if we know the nth term, to work out the next term, we simply add 2 to it. The bottom one uses a different notation, but it means exactly the same thing. If we know the n minus 1th term and add to it, it will get the nth term. And both of these scenarios are moving forward one term in a sequence. They just use a different notation. So let's try some examples. So I have here example 1. The next term is equal to the previous term plus 5, starting with a 5. So I have 5, and the next adding on 5 to that previous value gives me 10. Adding on 5 to that previous value gives me 15, 20, and 25. Okay, so in terms of a calculated sequence, I'm starting with the number 5, entering that in. And then I want to multiply that. No, I don't. I don't want to multiply at all. I want to add to that 5. And if I hit enter repetitively, I'll get my sequence 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. This, has, this is arithmetic because there's a common difference between each term of plus 5. If I look from 5 to 10, I've gone up 5. Common difference of plus 5. If I look at my second and third term, 10 to 15, I've gone up by 5. These are common differences, and that identifies that this is an arithmetic sequence. Graphing this, you can see that we have our first term has a value of 5, our second term has a value of 10, our third 15, and so forth. There's a common difference of plus 5, and as you can see, this generates an arithmetic sequence, generates a linear pattern of growth, where there's a positive difference each term, or value in each sequence, with successive terms increases, so it's a common 
difference of plus 5 with a linear pattern of growth. Here's another one. This one's slightly different. This is taking a term and subtracting 10, starting with 50. Okay, we we'll go to my calculator again. I've got the number 50. I enter that in. And then as soon as I press the minus 10, it takes it from the previous value that I had. Whoops, gone a little bit far there. Minus 10. And I can repetitively press enter. So it goes from 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10 and so forth. Okay, so this has a common difference of minus 10. From 50 to 40, we drop down by 10. From 40 to 30, we drop down by 10. From 30 to 20, we drop down by 10. Because the, common, because the difference is common, this is another example of an arithmetic sequence. Graphing it, we can see for the first term, n equals 1, we have a value of 50. n equals 2, it drops to 40. n equals 3, it drops to 30. It has a common difference of minus 10. This sequence, again, has a linear pattern, but it is a decay because we start with a high value of 50 and we end with a low value of 10. So it's reducing or decaying. That was arithmetic. Let's now look at geometric sequence. Geometric sequence works on the basis of ratios between successive terms. So from 2 to 4, I've got a difference of 2. From 4 to 8, I've got a difference between terms of 4. 8 to 16, I've got a difference of 8. It's, it's not a common difference. This is not arithmetic. So we look at the geometrics. So geometric sequences divides one term from the previous. So 4 divided by 2 gives me a factor of 2. 8 divided by 4 gives me a factor of 2. 16 divided by 8 is a factor of 2, and 32 divided by 16 is a factor of 2. So this particular geometric sequence has a common ratio of times 2. And that's this value here. This is being identified as the ratio. It says whatever value I have originally, if I times that by 2, the next value will be calculated. So I start with 2 as my first term. I multiply that 2 by 2, and that gives me the next term of 4. I put 4 into my equation, times that by 2, and that gives my next term of 8. This is a geometric sequence with a common ratio of times 2. Graphically, you can see geometric sequences have a curved shape. They're no longer linear. This one has a common ratio of 2. There's an increasing pattern with an upwards curve. You get this increasing as long as this R value, here we've got the 2, as long as this R value is greater than 1. Okay, A value less than 1 has a different pattern altogether, and we'll look at that in a second. So in this particular sequence, I've got an R value of less than 1. It's 0.5, and I'm starting at 64. Let's go back again to our calculator. I'm starting at 64. Enter. And I want to multiply that by 0.5. OK. So it goes from 64, and I press Enter. Drops down to 32, then to 16, then to 8. Then to four. This is also a geometric sequence. Okay, the common ratio between successive terms here is 0 0.5. 64 times 0 0.5, which is the same as divided by two, is 32 times 0 0.5 is 16, and so forth. So our R value, our common ratio here, is 0 0.5. You may guess that what we have here is a curve graph again, but this time it's decaying. It's a downwards trend. So this is the type of pattern you get where the common ratio has a value of R that is less than 1, it's something like 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, whatever. It's going to reduce. Okay, It's non-linear, so we know it's a geometric sequence. The last two couple of examples where we've got a geometric sequence with a negative term, or a negative um, common ratio. So, here, if I take 64 and divide it by 128, that'll give me a half. But because it's negative, it's got a negative 0.5 as my ratio, as is shown up here, negative 0.5. When I take 64 and I times it by negative 0.5, it reduces to 32, but the negative multiplied by the negative becomes a positive. When I times that by 0.5 and minus 0.5, or negative 0.5, I end up with 16, but it's a negative. So you can see the pattern where it goes from a positive to a negative to a positive to a negative terminal. That's typical and highlighted by the negative ratio. Graphically, this gives us a really random kind of sawtooth pattern. When we start, it was a positive because our initial term is 128. And I halve that or times it by negative 0.5. So the 128 would drop down to negative 64. I then halve that and times it by negative as well. It jumps back up to 32. And halve again, 16 negative, 
half again and I end up with that 8. So this is a common negative ratio that is less than um, negative, sorry, it's between negative 1 and 0. So this type of pattern would go for values of minus or negative 0.1, negative 0.3 or negative 0.7, etc. Once we go above 1, our pattern actually increases rather than decreasing. Finally, this particular pattern we've got here, take our original value of 2 and multiply it by negative 1.5. Let's try that in the calculator. So I'll enter in a 2, enter, and I'll multipl multiply that by negative, or minus rather, oops, minus 1.5. So as you imagine, that will go from 2 to now when I multiply it becomes a negative, but I'm times it by 1.5, negative 3. Multiply that number by negative 1.5 becomes 4.5. Multiply that again by negative, brings it back to a negative value of 6.75, and so forth. Okay, so again we get a sawtooth, but this time there's growth, it's getting bigger. But again, there's a negative R value ratio. Accordingly, it goes from a positive value initially of 2, down to a negative value, then to a positive, then to a negative, then to a positive. That indicates the, the negative in my particular R value, or my ratio. The fact that it goes from a 2 to a value of 3, then up to a value of 4 plus, it's increasing, so it's greater than 1. So the kind of ratios you're looking here are negative 1.1, negative 1.3, negative 1.7, could be negative 3.8, as long as it's a value that is an, it's a number greater than 1, but it has to be negative. So effectively, we say that our ratio has to be less than negative 1. Look, I hope this has given some insight into both arithmetic and geometric sequences with recursion relations. Um, stay tuned for more educational videos. Thanks for watching.